So welcome back everybody to another video on my YouTube channel. Anyone new that's watching, by the way, please remember to hit the subscribe button because I get loads and loads of new viewers, but the subscriber levels don't match the viewers. So if you would be so kind to subscribe and also make sure that you mark that you want notifications. So any new videos that get loaded on the channel and there's at least five a month, you will get notified and then you can go and watch them straight away. So I'm gonna get straight into the video for today. And this is another refresher. You'll notice that a lot of the videos I've done recently have been recaps and rejuvenated videos of ones that I've done before. And today I'm gonna do um, a new video of my highest performing video. I think me and Jordan were talking, it's on over 15,000 views now. So when we last spoke to Jordan, you were in, we were saying first six months. No, was it first, your first three months, would you say, when we last did this video? Uh, it was definitely within my first uh, three months of uh, being signed off by your training, let's say. So yeah, I was kind yeah. of like my devices. Probably say when I got three months in, yeah, roughly. So really early on. So we did a day in the life then. We're now gonna update that as a day in the life now because, and I should know this, what, how many years, are you three years in now or is it? Uh, two? No, two, two, two last month, yeah. So I started on the 1st of Feb, like, uh, 2022. Yeah, God, it feels like so long ago now, ages yeah, but, ago. I know. So I thought, let's get Jordan back on. Let's um, get an update as to what he's getting up to and what life is like now he's two years in. So for anybody new going into recruitment, you can see the comparison. But also if you're watching and you are around the same length of time in recruitment as Jordan, you know you're not alone in some of the things that you're going through. So let's get cracking. If I look to the right, I'm just looking at my questions because I will forget them otherwise. So what, Jordan, what is a typical day like for you now? There's a lot more, I would say, admin sides of things. When I when I first started, I was, uh, I, I was quite a, a delivery and talent um, consultant as well as trying to build up my, my 360 desk. But now it's, um, you know, I've got my own client wins. I've, I've built up a good um, a good desk and, you know, been passed on on clients and, and contacts as well. So it's a lot of admin in the mornings, generally checking through emails, looking through messages, just chasing up anything that's live. Um, really, so if I had interviews throughout the day or, um, you know, just generally just making sure that everything's ticking by and, and, and going well. So the mornings start with a, a BD session generally every single day. I will call Good. Um, or <laughs> email um, at least 10 to 15 um, prospective clients whilst keeping in touch again with the ones that I've already won um, in the day. And I generally split my day up between uh, 9 and 11 for my BD. I then will work between 11 and 1 sourcing, um, sourcing for a live role generally is, is the thing that I do. And then, you know, go on lunch as a typical day and come back and once again, just go into a different position. I don't like to spend too long on a certain role just because you can exhaust yourself, you can make yourself, you know, overwork a position, you're sitting through CDs and, you know, you just become exhausted looking over the same thing and looking for the same thing. So I quite like to split my days up with, with skill sets. So whether it be one to the other, um, or even if I'm, you know, cross-referencing the same skill set for different jobs, you know, whatever it might be. So yeah, I tend to split my days up then into two hour segments, uh, working between nine and five. And then, yeah, coming back for lunch, I'll have a look, another two hour split depending on what skill set I'm looking for to then close out my day with probably a little bit more admin, things like that. But yeah, it's a, it's a lot different to what it was uh, way back when. Because like I said, I was, I was generally just sourcing. I was just mm. looking for the talent. Whereas now I'm, I'm generally covering all things 360 on a lot more basis. Yeah. And for anyone watching that doesn't know, a 360 recruiter is when you do the client side. So you're trying to have your own clients, win your own clients and manage them and you're also dealing with the candidate side, the sourcing that Jordan was talking about. But I'm glad you pointed that out because there is a difference. As you grow in your role and you do have more of your own clients, even if you're just a 180 recruiter that only deals with the candidate side, for example, you're going to get given more and more work and that creates more and more admin. So, you know, more notes to put on the CRM, um, more emails coming into your inbox. So you've generally got more a higher level of work to deal with as you go along. So yeah, I'm glad you um, I'm glad you pointed that out then. So two years in, you know, we see the market change. What have been the biggest changes you've seen since you started? And I know your role has developed, 
Like, what are the biggest market changes you've experienced over the last couple of years? In the two years that I've been here already, the market's been like a yo-yo. When I started here, we were on, on a bit of a backdrop from the COVID-19 madness that everyone talks about that you know, they, they were having to turn down positions because there was too many to kind of fill. And then, yeah, when we when we kind of had the come down of, of that and of what happened, um, you know, from the, the trough of, of the market. Now we're going into 2024, so 2023 was a little bit slow. 2024 has picked up already. Already I'm having new clients, um, new client wins. I'm also having pre-existing clients who are, you know, looking to expand their teams now that they, you know, their financial situation has changed having that full first year or first couple of years from the pandemic things like that so it, it literally has been a yo-yo when i started like i said it was a little bit of a slow turn 2023 was even worse yeah but yeah coming into 2024 it's it's kind of trajected quite um yeah quite big in in consideration and in, in comparison to what it has been as well so yeah, it's, it's a bit of a nightmare. Obviously, you've got to try and stick through the tough times, but yeah, we, we've kind of come out on the, on the greener side of things now. And I think it's important for people to hear that, um, whether they're in recruitment now or they're going or want to go into it, because it can be like a yo-yo. Um, I think one client before described recruitment to me as champagne and razor blades, and it does feel like yeah. that sometimes, like you are riding on an amazing high, and then something in the market happens and it changes. And some of it is completely out of our control, you know, all the COVID stuff that you mentioned. So it's really important to recognize that if you think Jordan's two years in and the yo-yos that he's seen, you know, that's gonna continue. That's just a two year period. So it's really important to be aware of the the ups and downs of our market and how you, how you then go and deal with it as well. Um, what do you think has been like the biggest challenge for you in the two years? Ooh, um, I would say the initial learning. Um, so coming from a different type of sales background. So learning how, you know, the process works and, and really grinding out through the BD hours that you don't want to do. Or, you know, you, you've got to call clients to pick up the jobs and, you know, kind of pitch in where you can and, and do the work that you need to do for the future because your desk might be busy and you might want to just you know pick up candidates and, and get them across and send them over the cds and that's all good and well that you need to do that but the tricky thing is working out your day working out the time um just knowing where to fit your bd in because i could have seven roles like you said it can drop dramatically i could have seven roles this week those let's say five of those seven get pulled and they're no longer needed all of a sudden I'm working too, but if I haven't done my BD last week, I'm then on the back foot and I'm chasing BD. Mm. So it's just, it is really just working out your time effectively. I would say that's that's probably been the biggest challenge. Um, yeah. As well as learning the process, just learning when to contact and you know how to contact in the right manner. Don't just you know be, I've got this person. Do you want to see them be precise? You know, sell a skill set, sell the person, tell them how good they are, things like that. It's just learning, like I said, the, the general step-by-step -step process of, of how to pick up clients, how to place a successful candidate, things like that. And um, I think when we get it all the time, when we say we're in recruitment, people think we just get people jobs. But you know, as you said, the learning period, you start doing recruitment. I'm sure somebody in your group, what might have even been you said it, like, God, I had no idea there was so much that went into what a recruiter does. And there is so much to learn. And you're probably still learning now. Like I still learn things now as the market changes. So yeah, that that is always a challenge, isn't it? When you start is getting to grips with the key stuff. And then, as you said, time management, prioritization, because as you get busier, that obviously presents more challenges. You think you've just nailed it and then you get more work and then it's adapting to that. So it's almost a constant yeah. learning curve, isn't it? But it, it is difficult because there's never enough hours in the day, really, is there? We could work yeah, for, all day or night. Yeah, you, you literally could. And, and then, as I mentioned earlier, it could become exhausting for you. You know, you, you literally could exhaust the job boards or, or LinkedIn or your, your CRM, you know, whatever it could be. So it is just, you know, being effective with, with what you need to do when you need to do it. The way I look at it is, and I always make a joke of work smart, not hard, but mm -hmm. in this job, you generally need to do both. You need to yeah, work smart and you generally need to put the hours in. You know, uh, sometimes, you know, you have to go back off your lunch, you know, 30 minutes early just because 
you know you've got to call someone or you know you've got something to do or it's just a good time to maybe prep a cv whatever it might be you know it, it really is about you know putting your time effectively working hard knuckling down where needed and i would also say and, and advise learn your sector if you know your sector if you know your clients you generally get can get the wins you know you know what yeah. you're pitching in you know what skills they take and and yeah it, it does it does become easier in the long run because you learn you know everything about it and well you like to think you know everything about it but like you said you learn things every day i had something yesterday that i've never dealt with in the two years that i've been here and i've spoken to people who have been doing this job for 10 plus years and they hadn't dealt with it so Master. you know you, yeah again you learn something you know new every single day and you know you just got to keep keep progressing and yeah just keep working towards the end goal no definitely um and i think um what you said then about no you know making sure that you start to learn about your sector of course you don't need to be as much of an expert as your candidates or your clients but you still need to have you know a level of understanding so um no i'm glad you pointed that out what do you think has been your biggest win like your biggest success in the two years i would probably say right now i'm I'm, I'm kind of seeing the progression really take place. It's been a long 18 months being, since being signed off from your training. It's been a long two years of learning the whole process. Um, mm -hmm. But I would probably say my biggest win is going on right now. I am, um, yeah, I'm, 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 like I said, 2024 has taken off and generally so is my, uh, so is my positions in regards to placing candidates. Um, so I'd say that the most successful you know, point that I've been having right now is is my current period, but my biggest win was generally how chuffed I was with making my first 360 placement. It's Pick the best feeling, fight. isn't it? Yeah, exactly. You don't have to share any commission, you don't have to share any splits. You've done the hard work of getting the T's and C's agreed, you've done the hard work of picking up the clients. And it's just, yeah, it's just a really nice feeling of making that first 360. I'd probably say that's my biggest win, and it's probably not even the biggest either, because it was only a small fee. But yeah, it's... Um, oh, it it's just feels so good, because you know it's all you that's done it as well. Like like you said, you, si you signed on the client, you did the business development, you've managed the relationship and the, the candidate process. How yeah. far in were you um, when you made your first 360 placement? I think after training, I, I think I was around about three months in, maybe four months in after the full training. So it did take yeah, quite a while. Long after, I was, was making it? No, no, I was from from the initial start it felt like forever, but I was doing a lot of talent delivery work and consultancy on on the back end of things. So I weren't managing clients as much. I was picking up or trying to pick up what I could. But yeah, so I was I, I got used to the obviously the whole process of finding a candidate, speaking to them, sending their C V, etc. But yeah, it's just like I said, having that 360 was was different. It was a different feeling. And like you said, it was very rewarding you know, that I've picked them up, done the T's and C's, signed them off, got everything agreed. And yeah, when you, when you successfully place them in, yeah, it's, it's a really nice feeling not to share any commission and have everything yourself as well. Oh yeah, definitely. And I think that's for any of you watching, again, new to recruitment or going into it, don't expect, I think some people get sold the dream or they think like, oh, I'll be making loads of placements in my first month and it doesn't work like that. Jordan, you made a placement in your first month, I think, but that was obviously someone else's client, so that's different. Still great, but if you think about your, the full 360, if that is what you're doing, you know, three months, that's that's great. Like, that's a good time scale to be doing it in. Uh, and even some people even don't do it at month three. I think I was about my third month from memory. Weirdly, at the same, I started my recruitment career at the same company that Jordan's in right now. So I think I was about three months in, but I think some people get, they come in and because they feel they're not getting results quick enough because they're unrealistic about it they leave and you've got to give it a chance because three months is nothing absolutely no. nothing no i was i was always it feels advised. like a long time when you're in it but it's not <laughs> yeah it does um i was always advised give it at least two years and yeah i i kind of seen different obviously after you know 12 months or so of, of little wins and you know, picking mm -hmm. up the young, my own clients, etc. But yeah, give it, I'd say give it at least 18 months to really see the benefits, to really see the results, because it is a long process. You have to pick your own clients, you have to build a desk. Um, and you need, I would probably say a foundation of maybe maybe five, six of your own clients. And if then you've got the the luck that I do, that I've 
you know, I specialize in a certain sector that if one of my colleagues needs help with their positions to fill a role that again is in my skill set, is in my sector, I can then pick up that work as well. So I think having, you know, a solid base of six or five, six clients who have given you continuous work, even if it's just, you know, maybe five, five, six roles a year, you know, across across the, the five or six clients that you'll have is good. And then having just sporadic clients here or there, just the little wins I like to call them. You know, I had one last week that I seen a company advertising, pitched them in on the Thursday. I actually went on annual leave then Friday and the Monday to visit family. I came back on the Tuesday and the candidate was pitched on the Thursday, as I mentioned. We booked in for an interview on the Wednesday at nine. So the next day I had a call at nine. Yeah. Sorry, 11 on the Wednesday and she, yeah, got the job. So. It's little wins. It's not a client I've ever worked with before. It's just a sporadic call. I got this person. You have this position. Do you want to see them? And yeah, you know, like I said, it was very fortunate that they got the role. And, you know, it, it really worked in my favor. It worked fast. It worked well. They were efficient. I was efficient. And, you know, my colleagues was able to pick it up while I was away as well. So, you know, again, it's, it's the little wins. It's those sporadic clients here or there that also, you know, build up your desk. And I'll continue to speak to them now, you know, sporadically when they need, you know, roles be filled yeah. or if they need anything so yeah so I'd say that mix of the short term wins and investing in the long gain ones as well and 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 taking opportunities when they arise you know not being afraid like you did to pick up the phone for you know like you said you've got to work hard and you've got to not be afraid to do things I think you you um, alluded to this earlier BD isn't something that people always want to do but imagine if you hadn't have reached out in that scenario you know there would have been yeah, no placement. Exactly, exactly. There's no placement. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm not earning my commission. My KPIs aren't getting hit. My targets aren't getting hit. You know, stuff like that. You know, that can happen if you don't pick up the phone, if you don't email. You know, LinkedIn is a good way to to get a message across as well, because you know it's it shows and you know you're actually a person if you've posted on LinkedIn. You know, again, knowing your sector, knowing your skill set. You know, maybe hiring managers might look at that. They might read about that. And, they'll see, you know, oh my God, this guy actually knows what he's on about. He might actually have the right candidates. And, you know, I, I don't like speculating candidates. I've never spoken to, I've never done it. And I don't like the whole, I might have this candidate, let's discuss the, the position and then I'll source. I generally only go yeah. to you know, people when I've spoke to a candidate and they're happy for me to, you know, maybe do a bit of, you know, dig in and, and work around the uh, South Wales area for them. Let's, I know you've given some tips and advice already, but if you were going to give one piece of advice to somebody that's going into their first recruitment role or they've you know they've literally just started what would that one piece of advice be um try and be as much of a sponge as you can in terms of knowledge and experience just soak up the sort of background that your colleagues have had um learn from them as much as you can ask as many questions as you possibly can and get Kate O'Neill to, to try and train you. Um, I think that's the best way to do it. <laughs> but um, but no, right. yeah. Like, I didn't uh, tell him to say that, by the way. I did, <laughs> I did not say tell you to say that. <laughs> uh, no, she didn't. But, um, but no, just take as many notes as you can. Just, like I said, be as absorbent as possible, really. I think that's the best way that I learned. I was asking you many questions. You know, we would have our training sessions quite ruthlessly let's say we were we were in here for a fair few hours as a group obviously day in day out and then yeah going out on the phones then and actually being on the shop floor on the sales floor sorry um yeah i was asking more questions i was getting you know more details what can i do to enhance this why are my adverts not pulling this information why am i not getting this candidate what can i do about this boolean just anything that you can do i just advise just like i said just learn on the job that's the best way to do it i think you can obviously do as much revision as you know you possibly can but yeah, learn on the job. Got to put it into practice. Hundred percent. Yeah, BD emailing practice makes perfect. Of course, you know you might not get every win because it's not like that. But it's about making your chances. And yeah, you know, and I think happens. you know um, it's important that when you're looking at a, a, an agency, you know Jordan joined an agency where um, the support, you know, so we got given training. You know, really good amount of training at the start. They went and got an external trainer, which which happened to be me. But when I wasn't there, and it still probably happens now, you know, you've got support from your manager, from other managers in the business. There's still training going on. It doesn't stop, does it? You know, so you want an agency that invests in you as a person and the team, because 
ultimately that's what Jordan has experienced and that's not the whole reason why he's still in recruitment but it's you know it's it's there to help and guide you through that process so um I think it's about picking the right the right agency where you're going to get that support and like Jordan said be a sponge listen to people on the phone around you ask questions just sit next to people shadow you know ask for, if you're not getting training ask for it and if you won't be given it and i'm seeing this happen more often if you're willing to invest in it and you you can pay for it there's people externally again such as me but other trainers where you can go and get it yourself and i'm seeing more and more people do that but the the learning bit as jordan said and working hard is, is really really important um thank you for coming on with me again jordan i know everyone will find this really really useful um, to see the difference in, you know, early on in the career to now and the realistic timescales. Like, I really like that you said you've got to give it 18 months to, uh, to see, A, whether it's for you, but B, to see the results. Yeah. Too many people come into this industry, and you've probably seen some come into your agency, that come in and think that they're going to be a top biller in like six months. And unless you are given loads of clients and loads of easy stuff, which isn't often how it works, that's not going to happen. So thank you so, for being so honest uh, and real for everybody watching. Um, but that is it for today's video. Keep, as I said at the start, um, go back and watch the old video of this. You'll see it pop up at points, the cards, go and watch it. Um, it does give some great advice for people that are new to recruitment. Obviously go out and watch the other videos, subscribe to the channel. Any questions you've got, chuck them in the comments and I can get them covered off for you. But thank you so much for watching and I will see you for the next video. Take care.